Hi and welcome to Neat AI. So I coded up noughts and crosses, or tic-tac-toe if you prefer, and stuck a Minimax AI on it. Loser! You're a loser! Are you failing, sir? Thanks for that, Hank. It covers a basic method for tracking game and position states, and winning or losing moves, and I want an opponent to play against, so I'll check out some basic methods for setting that up. When coding up the game, I decided to keep a track of three pieces of information, namely the player pieces, the opponent pieces, and the board state after each move. I do this by representing the information as a nine-digit binary number, and I can use this binary number to easily check if a move a player is going to make is valid. I want to check that there's not already a piece in the chosen square. And I do this by comparing the numbers using a bitwise AND operator. Each bit is checked against its corresponding bit, and if they all return a zero, then the space is free. Any other number would mean the space is occupied. The AND operator is one of the easiest to use. It only returns a one if both digits are being compared are one, any other combination returns a zero. In the example shown, if you AND 7 and 5, the result is 5. And you can check this out with the Windows calculator set to programmer's mode, as it has all the bitwise operators available. I use the same idea to check if a winning move has been made. There are 8 bit patterns that correspond to a winning move, and I show them here along with their decimal equivalent. After every move, I do a quick check of the player's piece locations against these eight patterns, and if the resulting bit pattern is the same as the bit mask being used, then I know a winning move has been detected. And in the same way, I can check if a draw has occurred, as the board state will be the binary equivalent of 511, with no winner detected. And that's why I maintain the player, opponent, and board states in the binary pattern shown here. So what exactly is happening after every move? The first thing I do is ensure it's a valid move. If I was to click into an already occupied square, I'd need to detect that. The next function called checks to see if it was a winning move. If it is, great, then it's game over. If not, then I check to see if it's a draw. And that loop repeats for each player. Initially, to test out the game, I set the opponent to just make random moves. And this was fine for testing, but not very challenging. To make it more interesting, I coded it to look one move ahead for all possible moves to see if any winning moves existed. This was now easy to do as I had created the winning move function already. If no winning move is detected, I got it to check if a winning move existed for the opponent. If there was, then this was selected so it could be blocked. And this works fine, and if you don't pay attention, then you will lose against it. When I get it to play against itself, most games end in a draw, but it's still beatable as it's only looking one move ahead. To go further, I'll need to look further ahead in the game, and this is best done using the Minimax algorithm. Formally speaking, Tic-Tac-Toe is a zero-sum and perfect information game. It means that each participant's gain is equal to the other participant's losses, and we know everything about the current state of the game. Minimax is a recursive algorithm which is used to choose an optimal move for a player assuming that the opponent is also playing optimally. As its name suggests, its goal is to minimize the maximum loss. Minimize the worst case scenario, in other words. Consider the example shown. How many winning move combinations exist? Well, we determine this by drawing a tree of all possible board states. Starting from the initial state of 0, 0, we have three possibilities. 1.0 gives us a win, but let's explore other paths as well. 1.1 gives our opponent two possibilities. 2.0 is a winning state for our opponent, so it's a losing state for us. And 2.1 gives only one possibility in which we are winning. 1.2 gives our opponent two possibilities. 2.2 is a winning state for our opponent, so it's a losing state for us. And 2.3 gives only one possibility in which we are winning. Okay, but how do we interpret this? Let's start from the terminal states at the bottom and calculate the minimax scores. At level 3 we are maximizing, so we are propagating plus 1 scores to the previous moves at level 2. At level 2 we are minimizing, so we are propagating minus 1 scores to the previous moves at level 1. And at level 1 we are maximizing, 
so we were propagating plus one to the previous move at level zero. Ultimately, at level zero, where we actually are, we should pick the move associated with the plus one score we've ended up with. Our tic-tac-toe AI performs such simulations for every move, thus making itself an unbeatable opponent. But what makes it unbeatable? Due to the relatively small state space, less than 200,000 possible board combinations exist, which means it can easily search the whole game tree for an optimal solution, treating the game as a fully deterministic environment. On the other hand, chess, for example, has an enormous large state space of 10 to the 120 possibilities. This is a figure far greater than the number of atoms in the observable universe. And with such extensive search spaces, we can still use Minimax algorithm, but we have to remember to limit the depth of our search, otherwise we can end up computing results for a very long time or even forever.